Hermit Ducks, it's Simon here. Welcome back to the Hermit's Cave. It's been a couple of days. Hope everybody's doing all right and enjoying the start to your uh, weekend. I've uh, just got back from going on a walk. It's still quite early in the morning, so I thought I would start the day off with a cup of tea and have a look at a deck actually i do want to i do want to light some some incense so i'll just light some of that um i will be doing a couple of catch up in cards later this evening as well and um, 7 p.m uk time so i've got a few things i need to do during the day so yeah okay so the deck that we're going to be looking at today is Black Violet Tarot by Heidi Phelps. Um, this we showcased on the Spotlight video from uh, the Spotlight, Spotlight Live, I should say. Um, Cheryl and I, Cheryl from Oneness Emporium. We showcased it on Spotlight last week. Um, it's by Rockpool. Cheryl just stock this deck. So if you do want to get it, if you see it, you like it, and it's something you want to get, then uh, the code is still in place, Hermits10 at checkout, and you'll get a further 10% off the deck. So this, I remember um, seeing it before it was released, and because it was an independently released deck. Um, Rockpool have picked it up and they've done a fantastic job with it and was kind of indifferent about it. I was like, mm, it's a black and white deck. It's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's uh, female centric. I don't know if it would appeal to me, but actually having a brief look at it last week, I loved it. So I'm quite excited to have a bit more of an in-depth look at it. So it says on the back, use this deck as a tool to contemplate what is and dream about what could be, whatever your creative endeavor. With a women-led take on traditional tarot, these 80, there's two extra cards, I believe one is Ghost and the other is Coven, I think, Coven. We can have a look at them and I'll probably read from the book and tell you why those two extra cards are there. These 80 exquisite Art Nouveau inspired cards will help you reflect on any aspect of life, joyful or painful, meaningful or mundane, in order to tap into your creativity and artistic voice. Violets represent life and fertility, death and remembrance. The Black Violet Tarot reflects this idea of bittersweet dualities and it will support you to find the light in times of darkness. And I really like that. That's something we could all do with. Now, even though it's black violet, there isn't violet uh, accents or anything in the cards. But the edges, we've got a lovely metallic purple edge, which really contrasts the cards really, really well. So it is a two part box and it is a rose petal finish. So this is a really luxurious feel, really nice and compact. Um, it's quite sturdy. This is the inside. So nice sturdy box. We've got this violet uh, ribbon that helps us lift up. We've got the book which is also in this lovely uh, rose petal finish as well. And then we have the cards and the backs at the bottom uh, nesting in this. Uh, look, at, look, at, look at the edges. Oh my gosh. And not to keep um, belaboring the point, but I've said over the last few decks, whether it was the old style or um, a couple of others that I've shown, like uh, the Matt Hughes decks, the quality of mass-produced decks at the moment is exceptional. So that's great. Okay, so let's turn this over for a second. Um, we'll have a quick look at the book. So it's 174 pages, got a little bit about the author there at the back. Um, when I had a quick look at this last week, I, I like the 
fact that there was little further insights to some of the cards, not all of them, but there'll be like a footnote telling you uh, why um, certain things are depicted the way they are. So we've got introduction, how to use the cards, card spreads, the major arcana, which are the major life lessons, minor arcana, everyday life events, and then we're keeping with swords, pentacles, wands and cups. So here's your introduction. It's nice glossy paper, pips and courts. Uh, we go into different spreads, daily inspiration, weekly navigation, project kickoffs, and then what major arcana uh, represents, the life lessons. And then we go into the card. So you're getting probably like a full page, so a paragraph or so. Uh, with some keywords and then a reversed, also with keywords and a paragraph. But some cards, as mentioned here, you get a footnote, so the author's note. So here for the Empress, a both, as both a visual artist and mom, whose journey towards motherhood came joyfully but not easily, the Empress is a card that's close to my heart. So she just adds like a her own... Um, thoughts or ideas or justification for how she's depicted something. I noticed particularly with death. I once saw on a TV show where a character almost died from an overdose at her birthday party after pulling the death card from her mum's tarot deck and trying to get a tattoo of it on her chest. It was a great episode but a false and unfair use of the death card. Isn't it always when depicted in the media? Um, as a scary plot device, a uh, harbinger of the actual death. You know better now. Um, so yeah, so these, these are called uh, footnotes. And then we go into the miners. You get the same amount of information. So nice book. Happy with that. Let's bring the camera down and we'll have a look at the cards together. Because these are really, really nice. Okay, so... I think they're standard tarot size. Yeah. Standard tarot size, exactly, which is, this is from US Games, but also the same size as most uh, tarot um, printers, MPC being one of them. The backs, I really like the backs. They're simple, it's a nice design. Um, it looks nice. Again, we've got this beautiful violet purple this is the black violet um, tarot, so I'm glad they've done that. And I know there's probably a violet, these are violets, etc., because they're symbolic, as I said from when I read it, but I really like it. And I don't believe the indie version had this. I think it was like a matte black, could be mistaken, but I know it wasn't uh, violet. But this is one of my favorite color um, edgings for a deck. I think it's really, really striking. All right, so um, let's let's take a look at uh, the cards and I'll come back at the end and share my thoughts. Actually, scrap that, I'm gonna talk through it. <laughs> I, I started to go through the cards and I realized there was so much I wanted to say and I thought, well, let's, let's stop and let's go back and uh, share thoughts because otherwise, I'm showing you the cards and then when we get to the end, I'm trying to remember everything that was in my head, which having an ADD brain doesn't always work. So, the fall, I just think the simplicity of these uh, images are just beautiful. The very, a lot of them are silhouette, a lot of them are around the, uh, showing a shadow. Um, but really, really simple. Here we've got the fall really on the edge of the cliff there, almost like, and I know the, the dress kind of uh, melds with the, the cliff, but teetering right on the edge there, but looking up, wind blowing through the hair, and instead of holding a single flower, we've got this, this bouquet. Here's our magician, very simple magician. I love the blend between the air and the fire and they're very rooted with the ground and the flowers. Um, yeah, just really, really nice. I won't talk about every, every single card, but um, really lovely. Oops. 
cardstock as well. I don't know if I mentioned cardstock, but really nice, soft matte cardstock. Really good quality. This is probably my least favourite card. I know it's on the cover of the book and the box. Um, for a Hierophant card, I mean, I just, I don't really get it, but love our lovers. This is absolutely beautiful. The chariot, clever. I like the black and the white horse. I love the motion, uh, wind going through the hair to, you know, signify that motion. Strength is probably one of my favorites. The silhouette here of the lion is just really, and I, I kind of wonder why, and I'm thinking, well, this is perhaps her dress behind, because a lot of the figures in these cards are quite elongated. Um, so I was like, well, maybe it's her dress underneath. That's why I've got this solid block under the lion. The hermit is doing what it needs to do, really. You do get that sense of solitude, isolation, away from people. We've got the candle for the flame and the lantern. Wheel of Fortune, I like this. This is the cyclical nature of uh, of everything with the, the waxing and waning of the moon through the cycles there. Again, we've got a shadow here. We've got this uh, spotlight coming down, but the shadow being cast. We have the hanged one rather than the hanged man. And uh, I've had a few comments over the last few weeks about my kind of use of language when talking about female-centric decks. I just want to make it really clear. I have no issue at all a female-centric decks. What I have had issues is where there's been deliberate exclusion, because I don't want that for anyone, whoever they are, you know, whether it's a majority or a minority. You know, I'm all about inclusivity. And it wasn't that I was saying oh, there shouldn't be female-centric decks, because of course they should, but I still would like, I have no problem using this deck. It's language that's being used in books that only talk to females um, that I was referencing. She reminds me of Melissifant. Dragging them across, look, bound at the waist. Tower. I love this moon card. I really love it. We don't get the towers or anything, but we get this water. You can see the crustacean there. Um, the hounds. We've got the full moon, the starry night sky. This deck is quite simplistic in its imagery, but it's really powerful at the same time and quite striking. Love the judgment card. I love that actually she's sitting there reflecting and, you know, we are our own judge, aren't we? And she's looking at herself through the reflection. And I just think that's a really beautiful image. Love the world card, the silhouette. Gorgeous. So then we have Ghost. Um, and I said I would read from the book just to, because there's two extra cards. And some people, you know, when we've seen extra cards before, might say, I don't see the point in an extra card. Uh, the tarot is enough with the 78. But it's always, uh, it's always interesting to hear why bonus cards have been included. Um, so the key words are haunting, regret, and self-compassion. The ghost card features a woman who is confronted by a ghost who holds out a small bouquet of flowers as a gift or peace offering. Neither one seems shocked to see the other, but the woman seems afraid of the ghost and what she represents. Ghosts represent a confrontation between past and present, a healing from past, past trauma, regrets for the things you did or didn't do, or a fear that your past will be uncovered or will inevitably determine your future. 
This card empowers you to make peace with your history because there's no need to hide or be ashamed of it. Understanding where you came from can be powerful, a powerful step in determining where you want to go, who you want to be, and what mistakes you can learn from. And then the author's note is, the gowns on each figure are blowing in two different uh, directions, suggesting they're meant to move in separate ways, which inevitably they will. For now, they're looking at each other in the eye, confronting each other, even if it feels uncomfortable. They're doing the work to understand each other before they move on. And there is a reversed section as well. And then the second bonus card is Coven. And I really like this. So Coven is sisterhood, solidarity and secrets. The key words above may sound familiar because Coven is meant to be a counterpart to the Three of Cups, a card of sisterhood, solidarity and friendship. While the Three of Cups celebrates these ideas in a light, airy way, Coven represents close friendships as a form of protection. It gives a shout out to the people in your life who have seen you at your worst and accept you for who you, who you are without judgment. They know your secrets and you know theirs. You will always have each other's backs. If one person in the coven needs help plotting their next steps, the rest of the group will brainstorm, think things through or call you on your bullshit. We have the Ace of Swords. We've gone into the uh, Miners now, the Air Suit. Two of Swords. It's very, as you can see, it's very RWS. The Four of Swords, that looks like she's levitating, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe she is. Five of Swords, she's walking away. Looks like she's defeated. Oops. Six of Swords. See, really simple, really simple imagery. She's there in the boat holding a baby, crossing the, uh, the river. Seven. Eight. We have nine. I love this bedspread. The bed looks giant. <laughs> Ten is quite a powerful card. It's nearly all black. We have the page. Night. Queen and King. And then we have our Pentacles. Oh, that looks like a, almost like a continuation, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> Two. Do like this. I'd be interested to hear from people who have got the independently produced version of this. See if there has been any changes. I should perhaps watch a walkthrough. No 
obviously because this is a female centric deck all of the courts are females or in fact every there's no uh, no males in this part in this deck at all like that for the two of two of wands of the world love the three An interesting take on the six of wands. Eight is very simple. We've had it with the animals in the deck when the when they're a silhouette like this, it's like the strength card, just really striking. Here we are again with the king and the lion. Ace of cups. The aces are very in keeping with each other. I love the way they're holding a lotus. Interesting, isn't it? It's like the third person has come to join them. Four of Cups. Ah, oh, that's sweet. Sure it's focusing with my hands being in the way but so there we have it that's the black violet tarot the mass market version by rockpool released by rockpool and the artist is heidi phelps and um, Overall thoughts, in terms of packaging and design, it's beautiful, it's good quality, it's a thick deck, lovely matte cardstock, love the gilding, really think the book is well put together. Um, as for the cards themselves, the images are simple but powerful. Um, I really like what's been, what's been, how they're depicted, I should say. Um, simple, clear uh, imagery. For you to uh, for you to work with, and um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Whether you've got this as a independently produced deck or a mass market produced deck, um, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everyone, and enjoy your weekend. And until next time, go in peace. Namaste, and blessed be. Mm -hmm.